Hi, this is Janet with Paper and Spark, and today I'm going to walk you through how to use your PayPal import add-on spreadsheet. Now, this import add-on is made to be an additional tool to use in conjunction with one of our main seller spreadsheets. So you don't want to use this tool by itself. If you uh, sell via PayPal and mainly via PayPal, I'd recommend the PayPal seller spreadsheet instead. This, this import add-on is made to be used with something like the Etsy seller spreadsheet, the Amazon seller spreadsheet, or the Shopify seller spreadsheet, for example. And it's just going to provide a quick and easy way to import your PayPal sales and fees so that you can transfer those numbers into your main seller spreadsheet. All right, so just a few things to say about PayPal in particular before getting started with this spreadsheet um, in order for you to be using it correctly. First, you need to use this with a business PayPal account. If you do not have a business PayPal account, then it's time to upgrade. You can do it for free and you get the improved reporting functions with a business account that you'll need in order to use this tool correctly. Second and really important y'all, you have to be careful when you're using this tool to not double count or duplicate your PayPal sales. So the thing is is that we use PayPal in a lot of different places online and I'm assuming that you're using this import add-on in conjunction with another seller spreadsheet like I already mentioned. So if you're using the Etsy seller spreadsheet, you might be accepting PayPal as a form of payment from your Etsy customers and potentially importing in those PayPal sales with the Etsy seller spreadsheet already. Now if you use integrated direct checkout on Etsy, then that's totally fine. Integrated checkout means that Etsy customers can still check out with PayPal in your Etsy shop, but the money is not going into your PayPal account. It's still considered Etsy direct checkout, okay? If you are not using integrated direct checkout, then that means that if a customer on Etsy checks out with PayPal, it's going directly into your PayPal account. And if you import your Etsy sales with the Etsy seller spreadsheet and you import your PayPal sales here with this tool, you are going to double count any Etsy PayPal sales. So just to clarify, if you are using the Etsy seller spreadsheet already, and you do not have integrated checkout turned on, you do not want to also use this PayPal import add-on because you are going to duplicate your Etsy PayPal sales. If you are using the Etsy seller spreadsheet and you are also using integrated checkout on Etsy, then you can use this PayPal import add-on because you will not duplicate your Etsy PayPal sales. If you're not sure whether you're using integrated checkout, most of us are at this point in time, but if you do not get any PayPal sales from Etsy directly into your PayPal account, then that means you are using integrated checkout and you're okay to go. If you're not sure, feel free to email me and ask and I'll help you figure it out. Okay, so that covers Etsy sellers. If you're using this import add-on in conjunction with the Shopify seller spreadsheet and you are importing Shopify sales with that spreadsheet and you accept PayPal payments in your Shopify shop, then using this tool in conjunction with that Shopify seller spreadsheet is going to double count or duplicate your PayPal sales. So do, you do not want to use this PayPal import add-on in conjunction with the Shopify seller spreadsheet unless you don't accept PayPal and Shopify. I'm basically trying to warn you against importing multiple PayPal sales or importing the same PayPal sales from multiple sources. So like we're already capturing it when we import from Shopify reports and we don't want to capture them again when we import from PayPal. So just whatever you're already entering in here, uh, just, just keep in mind the big picture. You don't want to double count those PayPal sales, all right? 
Again, if you have any questions about that or you're worried that you might be double counting something, feel free to reach out and email me. So let's cover how exactly to use your import spreadsheet for PayPal. We're going to copy and paste our PayPal activity downloads into these light blue tabs down here to summarize your total PayPal sales for the month, your refunds issued via PayPal, your PayPal fees, your PayPal shipping expenses, and some sales tax data as well. All right, so to import the file that you're going to need to get this data from your PayPal account, go to your business PayPal account, click reports, and then click on activity download. Make the transaction type for completed payments only. And then put in whatever date range you want to import. For this example, I'm going to do January of 2017. Make sure the format is CSV and then click create report. It's going to say thanks, we're processing, we'll let you know when it's ready. Should only take less than a minute before you can hit refresh and voila there it is ready to download. So you'll click the download button And after it's downloaded somewhere on your computer, you can open it in your spreadsheet software of choice. And this is what it's going to look like. So in order to import this into your add-on spreadsheet, all you have to do is select all this data and you can do that quickly and easily by clicking on this little box right above row one and to the left of column A, clicking this box will select all the data. Once it's highlighted, you can either do um, right click copy or control C or edit copy. Once it's copied, go to the applicable month in your import add-on spreadsheet. In this case, I'm going to go with January. Click that same um, little box above the one to the left of A and now paste. So right click paste or edit paste. And here it is and we know that we've done it correctly by going to our monthly summary tab and seeing data generated here. So doing that one easy step is going to automatically sum up your sales your refunds, which will be already entered as a negative, your fees that you paid PayPal uh, as like a percentage of all your sales, shipping fees, and the shipping expense is going to be anything that's listed as being paid to the name U.S. Postal Service in this report. So anything that the spreadsheet sees that's going to U.S. Postal Service will show up in your shipping fees cell. It's also going to total your in-state sales, both with and without shipping, and let you know your sales tax collected. Now, I will say I have had several PayPal spreadsheet users let me know that they know very well that they are invoicing customers for sales tax and no amounts are showing up in these columns for them. Their sales tax column is blank. So if you are looking over here and see zero for sales tax collected, but you know that you did collect sales tax, your best bet is to come over to your imported file and look at column T. Make sure you do indeed not see any amounts here and then contact PayPal. Unfortunately, that is what a few people have had to do is contact PayPal and ask why they are not able to see this on their reports. And in some cases, PayPal is able to generate the correct report for them or tell them how to turn it on. All right, so your next step is to enter everything that you've just quickly imported into your PayPal add-on to your main seller spreadsheet. And this is gonna look different for everyone depending on what main seller spreadsheet you're using. And yes, I am aware that I'm about to enter 2017 data into my 2016 spreadsheet, but I'm just doing this for example purpose, so just hang in with me. 
Okay, um, so let's say I'm looking at my main seller spreadsheet. I have a couple of options. I can rename this uh, custom column to uh, just be total PayPal sales if I want, or I could do PayPal net sales or just PayPal sales, and I can just type in the total right here the after refunds amount. I can just do that, make sure that it's getting generated in my annual column, make sure that it's being included down here, which it is. So with my fees, um, depending on, that, again, what spreadsheet you're working with, you might already have a column for PayPal fees. Um, and again, you know, if you're following instructions from the Etsy seller spreadsheet or the Shopify seller spreadsheet, a lot of them already have instructions for you on how to find your PayPal fees. So you might have already entered that amount here. Um, and if you haven't, this is the time where you can enter that if, if you already have that row there. Um, and then for shipping fees, I would probably enter that on the postage tab. I just date it as the end of the month. And again, I know we're working into different years here. Um, I would enter, you know, whatever this is. In this case, it's zero, but let's say I had $45. So I could enter that here. Okay. And then it would total up here. And then I am fine just keeping the sales tax info here. You could copy it over here if you wanted to below the line on your current sales tax tab. Or if you're using one of the sheets that have sales tax directly on the monthly summary, you could add it in there as well. Um, the important thing is just to keep in mind that you want to add those totals together when you're filling out your sales tax forms. Just remember that however you want to transfer these totals over to your main seller spreadsheet, the goal is to have everything in one place so you can see your business's total net profit or loss for that month. So you can get a clear picture overall of how you're doing. So that pretty much covers how to use the PayPal import add-on. Let me know if you have any questions about anything, and I'll see you next time.